Hey, welcome back to Dwarf Mattress, the Dwarf Fortress playthrough that my friends and I are collaboratively working on. We're passing the save file around. Uh, I, this is season two of my first turn, the first turn in the playthrough. Uh, and I think I made a decision this time to start taking care of provisions, things like uh, food, farming, um, alcohol, things like that that we'll need. And things are off to kind of a slow start because I'm st I was still trying to figure out some of the very basics. I think at this point I'm just looking around and trying to figure out how many people we have, how many things we have. And of course I'm doing it the slow way. I'm just looking around with the cursor. Uh, and I think here I'm setting up a pen for my uh, hens to stay in. And I hadn't realized yet, but I, I had um, a lot of my grazing animals indoors. They all, I guess they go to the meeting area. And uh, of course, in there, there's no there's no grass or anything like that. So at this point, I finally decided to get them to come upstairs because they were they were uh, saying they were starving. Probably not a good idea to have my the buffalo starving. So um, set them a pen up outside. Get the dwarves to lead them up here, and you'll see in a bit here. It, it didn't take them any time at all to start clearing out the whole the whole little pasture that I set for them. And here we already have. Uh, the water buffalo outside, and then one of the hens is up here in his little pen. Uh, another one just now brought brought in. Um, checking out the uh, meeting area here. I, I, I guess I was still figuring out what some of the options were, what some of the settings were, because a pen is sort of a meeting area for animals in a way. And I don't know. Here I am finally installing a still because, like I said, we're going to try to take care of alcohol. Uh, the, the dwarves care very much about the brew, and so we need a place to, to brew. And I also had plans to put in uh, a kitchen downstairs. And uh, in a moment here, I think it's where I t when I take care of that. Yeah, here, here I go, installing the kitchen. Which we, we won't use uh, right away. In fact, I don't know if I use it at all this season. Um, but I figure at some point down the line we'll need a kitchen, so go ahead and take care of that. Here I'm putting in a chair in the kitchen, or in the dining area rather, and I uh, thought it was appropriate that a cat went and stood right on the, the spot I was going to put a chair. I originally thought he was occupying a chair until I realized I hadn't actually moved it in yet. Uh, building more chairs and, and bins here. I'm trying to basically stock up on things. I feel like I finally got some of the basic uh, workshops built. May as well go ahead and start building some things that we're going to need. I apparently uh, queued up a millstone there. I'm not sure. I may have just done that for fun. Uh, but I but I have a stockpile in here in the mason's area for stones, which... Oh, here's a... Uh, a uh, what do you call it? A work... A, a craft dwarf sh workshop or something like that, whatever you call it, where I can do crafts and things like that. We'll need that to do the, uh, the nest box boxes. install some doors here in the bedrooms and these aren't properly set up as bedrooms yet uh, I believe but in a moment I'm gonna set those up I'll do that right now in fact so I'm ass assigning the beds to particular dwarves and uh, we still have but seven dwarves at this point <laughs> and uh, one bed for each one bedroom for each and I've got one lowly uh, bed up in the dormitory which I have plans of filling in with more beds later, but uh, at this point, you know, it's all I can do to get a couple of beds made. Uh, still a little slow building things, because, uh, again, a lot of looking around and figuring out what to do, you know, what kind of general procedure to take. Um, here I'm making more tables for the dining room. This is the point where I was starting to get really frustrated because I'd set a farm to be built. And as you can see up here at the river, we've got Squibbly, who is the farmer. I've told him to, to harvest plants and to do take care of brewing and things like that. And he's doing none of it. He's he's not building the farm. I'm looking, I've checked out the options. I can't figure out why he's set up to be able to do the farm. He should be able to do it. Uh, and I'm watching my food supply, our f food supply kind of slowly dwindle. Our, our supply of alcohol is not improving at all. Um, and I'm trying to figure out why, and I keep kind of watching, and I remember kind of constantly pleading. I'm checking out the farm here and seeing that, you know, as far as I can see, everything's in order. Why isn't he building this farm? 
and Squibbly's just up here fishing. Well, it eventually occurred to me he's so occupied with fishing that he's not able to build the farm. So eventually, so here I am making an out outdoor farm. I, I thought maybe there needs to be soil. Maybe there's not soil in here where I des where I set up the original farm. Let me set one up out here. It turns out that's all wrong. Of course, it, it works out because then we can build different plants outdoors. But at the time, I just wanted him to build the dang farm and... Uh, Finally figured out that uh, it's because he was so occupied with fishing. I'm checking my stocks here. Not really, I wouldn't go so far as to say panicking, but getting a little Im impatient, getting a little worried about uh, the dwarves all starving to death. I don't have any means to hunt very effectively at this point. I, I can collect plants outside, I suppose, for, for food source. And I could slaughter animals. Uh, but I wasn't really sure. Here, I'm putting more beds in here. I'm trying to keep my mind off of the impending starvation of the the fort I suppose um, more tables more chairs yeah and uh, anyway I mentioned the stockpile earlier that I have near the masons workshop I'd set that up so the mason could have a quick supply of stone I eventually realized that a lot of dwarves were kind of constantly occupied with bringing stones to it you know you can see here it's filled up to the right of the masons shop uh, so I, I don't know, didn't seem terribly efficient. Eventually I, I set this to, to forbid stone. And of course then they spend the next few minutes coming and moving the stone out. But point is I get rid of the stone stockpile next to the mason shop. Might be not a bad idea. I just need to figure out how to implement it properly. And at the time, food is more important. Food and, and drink is more important. So I couldn't worry, be worried uh, with this thing. Checking out the farms again. Why aren't they being built? Squibbly, where are you? And uh, it's funny in retrospect I, how long it took me to figure out that Squibbly was uh, busy fishing. And all I had to do was turn his fishing off. I keep getting messages down here. This is the start of this nuisance. Uh, Akia has stolen a pigtail fiber rope. Akia kept breaking in. Here, and here's the mention of the Kia in the, in the alerts there. Uh, kept seeing mention of the Kia. Here's Squibbly up here buys lonesome fishing probably not a very safe thing to do either you know I'm looking checking his inventory what's he doing what's wrong with him why wouldn't he build this stuff uh, I think this is about when it occurred to me I've got to turn fishing off and, and there we go so now he's gonna come down here finally and start building these farms um, but this key it keeps showing up and at first I was thinking he was in a, it was an intruder or like a, a villain of some sort and I kept I'd pause it I'd look around and uh, Eventually, I figure out Kia is just a, a bird, just a little bird that steals things. So, still not a great idea to have things stolen from your fortress by a bird, but it beats having a, uh, a villain of, of sorts coming in with nefarious, you know, motives. So, Squibbly will come down here. Eventually, I think he drops off some fish first, and then he gets up here and... And because he's also qualified to brew, he's the one who has to build the still, so we can get some out. So everything kind of depends on this one, this one dwarf at this point. And uh, Squibbly is a very talented uh, farmer, it's uh, or becomes one anyway, he becomes talented enough. But at this point, I was rather frustrated with him. So, founder Squibbly uh, was not on my. He did not get a gold star during this the first part of this season. And there he is. He's finally setting up the farm. There was a sigh of relief. Uh, job's still not done. I still got to worry about making sure the farm is producing things, but at least we've got to start now. I was getting ready to get rid of this farm, and then I realized it's already been built. It was built before the other one. I didn't see it. So now I'm setting up wild strawberries and prickleberries to be to be uh, grown during different seasons here. Um, still figuring out a lot of the dynamics here. I, I, I see this now, and I realize how slow I was kind of moving. It took me forever to kind of get some of the things off the ground. But all a necessary uh, part of the learning process. And then Squibbly's in here. Uh, he built the, he's, uh, no, I think I set him up to cook. And then I realized, and then I gave him some brewing assignments. And then I realized brewing is more important right now because we have raw foods we can eat. Here I am setting, setting up the dormitory. Um, there he's building the still. And here I am setting up this farm. Uh, I think I just went with plump helmets every season for this one just to get things moving. Uh, I think later on, 
probably a good idea to bring some drinks there. Probably a good idea to have a little more variety the, coming from the farms, but in the meantime. Okay, and I think I missed it. I think there were some migrants who arrived here. I'm checking out these migrants. I remember there are two spears dwarfs, two, two spear dwarfs, dwarves, and uh, quite a few like kind of farmers. Like there was a cheese maker, a wax maker, a beekeeper, and uh, but a lot of them had some some uh, military capability as well, some some battle ability, which may come in handy. Uh, at this point, I still haven't set up any sort of barracks or anything like that. No sort of military. Uh, I, my my fortress I don't think has any sort of major value at this point, and I wasn't going out of my way to produce a lot of value, uh, which which worked out because I would have been out of my out of my depth if I'd started needing a military suddenly because I, I at this point didn't have any experience. Some of the new uh, migrants that have arrived are helping out with the farms, which was nice because we needed to play catch up for sure. Uh, got some brews going. And uh, you saw me a moment ago, you saw us uh, start to dig deeper. This was just uh, an attempt to kind of mine and see what's beneath us. So far, I still haven't had a lot of, this fortress hasn't reaped a lot of uh, valuable ore or anything like that. But uh, I figure at some point we'll probably strike something. It may be deeper. And, uh, you know, adding value is a double-edged double sword. That means more migrants. Also means more potential thefts and invasions. So I'm I'm really just doing what I can to figure out the basics. So I'm not too worried about um, drawing a lot of migrants at this point. Uh, you can see the the water buffalo have about eaten up the grass and grazed through the area that they've got uh, set uh, their pen set up in at this point. Start making some crafts and toys and things to uh, trade with the any potential trading parties that show up. And um, I think, I'll have to see here, I don't remember. I know in the first season, I, yeah, see, I haven't even built the trading trading depot yet, which I've got a little room carved out for it, and I, it didn't occur to me at this point that I hadn't built it. I went the entire first season without even realizing it. Chop down some trees course it's important kind of still taking samples of different areas down here curious about what I might find now one of those lower uh, caverns later I kind of was gonna set up as to be a, um, a uh, catacomb or not a catacomb rather a, uh, a tomb an area for tombs um, but uh, my turn was passed over before or was finished before I really needed one or had a chance to set it up. And actually, I say that. This is a little bit of foreshadow, a little bit of a, a spoiler. Uh, I do actually need a tomb before my turn is up, but I didn't have time to get it all prepared before the turn actually ended. So, I'm going to move my pasture down here because I see they're quickly running out of grass and they've already, you know, they starved to death once. Don't want them to. Um, suffer that again. Another poor water buffalo. Farm's looking okay over there. I got about a fifth of it filled in, growing something. I think at this point I was pretty much just keeping an eye on things, keeping an eye on production, trying to make sure the farms were set up and moving properly, make sure the uh, brewskis were being taken care of. And uh, it's funny how fast you forget what it was you were doing. You know, while watching this again, it's 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 like, what was I thinking at this point? I have no idea. So I'm obviously about to build something. I may be starting to build a, a wall. Okay, no. It looks like I'm looking at nest boxes. So I may have created some nest boxes uh, in that last batch from the craft dwarf shop. Here we go. So I'm starting to put a wall into place. My idea was I've got this pasture here now. I may as well encircle it, and as well as the rest of this area with a wall. Now the difficulty is, of course, I have a hill on the left side here, so I've got to 
you know, build a wall up around the hill to make sure it's blocked on all sides. I don't really know how effective a wall is. I still don't at this point. But um, I figured it's something anyway. And there's also something to keep some of my, my dwarves uh, busy with. Although I probably need to set more of them to be capable of helping with the wall. I have seven idlers, at this, around seven idlers at this point. All right, there they go. They're they're busy moving these this wood around. A lot of rain on this map, as I mentioned in the previous video. All right, so that is the end of season two of uh, the Chronicles of Suthmom Isaac, the Dwarf Fortress. I hope you'll tune in uh, for the next uh, season. Thanks for watching. Bye.